So, and that leads us to this concept. This is the microbial diversity complex uh, concept. And that is that it's the number and diversity of microorganisms that live on the leaf surfaces and the root surfaces that influence nutrient availability, that influence um, biological suppression of diseases. And in the soil, it influences the soil moisture retention because it builds the organic matter and it builds the, the structure of the soil. So, and so this is, this is really a key thing. It, this is universally applied across the board in agriculture. Okay, so uh, just an example, low bacterial diversity, high bacterial <coughs> diversity. Here's a, here's a good one. This is um, an outfit in California that was doing worm compost. Uh, it was worm gold. It was some work that George Hahn done, had done. This is a, a pathogen in inhibition assay. This is a petri dish uh, with um, the, uh, the, the uh, pathogen, the Phytophthora cinnamoni, was infected in the middle, and the cotton swabs on the outside were just treated with water. And so the pathogen was able to grow across the petri dish and grow wherever it wanted. This, in this one, the pathogen is in the middle. The cotton swabs on the outside were soaked in the worm compost extract. And because of the microbial diversity and density in, in the worm extract, they were able to fight off the pathogen. And this is a, a classic example, pathogen inhibition assay. It shows you that they have this activity against pathogens. It's because of this. They, have, they can compete, they can antagonize against the pathogen. And he, he has a couple patents out. If you look online for George Hahn, he has a patent on this compost, uh, compost castings material for both insect control and for disease control. So if you want some background on that, you want to understand this more on a technical basis, you can look that up. If you do another kind of Google search, he's actually now published several different uh, scientific journal articles all, along these lines. So briefly, so again, compost, as I said, is great. Uh, however, if, if you don't have animals on the farm, you don't have enough feedstock to make your own compost. The other thing is that compost, uh, you can purchase it, uh, but in large quantities, expensive. So what I'm suggesting is you buy a smaller quantity, like a, a, a cubic yard, or part of, you know, just a few cubic feet of material. And, and this is the new technology is making uh, extract. So you can make an aerated compost tea, or you can make a liquid compost extract. And this technology is widely available now, and you can plug into it. Uh, there's also now extension publications on this that thoroughly describe the technology and the science behind that. So I'm, I'm comfortable sharing that with you. So um, this is, these are really simple. This just, you just need an aerator and you need some bubbling uh, device. To make a tea, the concept is you start with a substrate. You need a quality compost that has all the microbial diversity in there. You're going to agitate it in water and dislodge the microbes into the solution and then you're going to keep on aerating them, and then over time, the population is actually going to grow in 24 to 36 hours. You're going to feed them a little bit of microbial food stuff, and you're going to have this very active uh, consortium of, of microbes in there, and then you can apply that to your crop and to the soil surfaces, okay? Here's another one, high end. This, this unit's more like $4,000. $4, he sells all the plumbing, and you provide the tote. Uh, this one is, been, is really interesting because you can make both a tea and an extract from the same system. But here's the compost sock and the dome, and, and then here's the agitation, and again, so you get agitation, dislodging, you get the microbes into the solution, then you can apply them out to the landscape. And you're actually inoculating your soil and leaf surfaces with these beneficial organisms, okay? Uh, Here's a, this is a, uh, another system out of Texas, ERATH compost. It, again, it can be made for the tea and the extract. That's Sabino Cortez, a friend of mine, uh, who developed this. It's, a, it's got a, a cyclone type of a, of a, of a mechanics to it. He, he's like a genius, you know, kind of a farmer that worked in the dairy industry and figured this out for solid separations of dairy manure. And so uh, in this instance, there's a system in Texas called Serengeti grazing that mimics what happens in the African plains. And what they do is they figured out that uh, Bermuda grass 
If you keep Bermuda grass uh, thoroughly irrigated and moistened and graze it d densely, as even if, if the height never gets above four inches, it has a forage quality that's equivalent to alfalfa. It's crazy, but what they do is they put a lot of animals on a small acreage and put this irrigation on out there. They also stimulate it with these uh, teas and they'll, they'll, they'll do a tea, they'll put some fi liquid fish and some molasses all together in the tea, they'll spray it out on there. And that's what you're looking at. So that's the Bermuda grass. And the other thing that's important that drives this system is our little friend, the dung beetle. And the dung beetle is fantastic. A lot of these holistic grazing farms see the dung beetle come back. They attack the manure piles, they help in nutrient cycling. There's some really, really solid USDA research uh, that shows that the nitrogen contribution from these dung beetles is equivalent to 200 pounds of ammonium nitrate per acre. You certainly have dung beetles in Kentucky on, on any kind of a farm with animals that are, are not heavily wormed with ivermectin and so forth. This is, this is an instance where if you build it, they come. So if you're doing, if you do a holistic grazing, you cut out the wormers, you cut out the fly, fly and parasites, uh, you know, materials, and you, you develop a healthy animal, healthy manure, you'll have the dung beetles, right? And then finally, now, that, now here's the tricky thing, is on compost teas under organic certification, you do have to be aware of a couple particular things. So if you're nearing a fruit harvest and so forth like that, I would not recommend doing compost teas when the fruits are ripening. But earlier in the season when, they, when the berries are small, et cetera, uh, and then after the uh, fruit has, has been harvested you, to keep the crop healthy during the rest of the year. The only reason is because there's an incredible heightened um, uh, awareness about food safety. And food safety is about microbes. So here's, 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 the, here's the context here. In this instance, I'm talking about healthy microbial populations. But in food safety, they're worried about pathogenic microbial populations. I'm talking about the kind that, that injure people's gut. N not plant pathogens, right, like Phytophthora and early blight and stuff like that. I'm talking about pathogens that make people sick, like E. coli and Salmonella. And so that's the, that's the thing that farmers are dealing with nowadays. So uh, I'll just mention that under this umbrella of the compost, and the compost teas, just you have to kind of also be aware of what is a good quality tea and how to manage for that. Uh, I don't have enough time to go into all that. If you, if, it's very simple. If you take a compost or a warm compost and you put it in a Dixie cup, uh, just, uh, just a couple tablespoons, and then you put water in there and swish it around, just swish it around, and then take a drop of that, put it on the microscope slide, and look at it, you'll see for instantly all this bacteria and fungi, protozoas and nematodes. It's all there. And that's what you're doing. You're getting out of the substrate into solution and then applying it onto the leaf and root surfaces. And then therefore, they're doing their functional work. And this is the last slide, by the way. So, so the, the, the compost and the worm compost are do-it-yourself, lower cost, but a real big, impact on the health and, of your plants and soil health, okay? Here are a few different um, commercial microbial inoculants and compost sources or suppliers that you may want to you know, jot down. And if you want to plug in, these would be some good ones to plug into. But so, for example, you can get uh, supplies from compost works to feed your teas and so forth. And the same thing with simplicity. But um, yes, for, for all of this, like I said, it, it's uh, applicable to organic or sustainable or eco-agriculture. And, uh, and because at the end of the day, it really is about soil health and crop health.